Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Updates, the 12th of January. Hopefully for those that are in these cold places right now, uh, you are staying warm. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. A new video is this week. There were some updates made to AZ900 related to the Azure authentication so around Entra. So I created two videos specific to those new topics. And then I also created a video on the VM hibernation feature. Really useful for those VDI or where I have some workload that takes a long time to warm up and be useful. Well, now I can hibernate, stop paying for the compute, but resume from where I was. So I go into those details. On to what's new on the storage side. So now the ZRS managed disk, remember ZRS where I have availability zones in a region, distributes the three copies over the three availability zones. So I have a better resiliency to entire data center level failures. Well, they're now available in uh, additional regions. That's West US three and Germany West Central. And UltraDisk is also available in new regions. Now that's UK West and Poland Central. Remember UltraDisk is the lowest latency the highest performance possible disk, but also it enables me to separately set the IOPS and the throughput I want from the capacity. But I can also modify dynamically those IOPS and throughput without having to disconnect the disk, for example. So it gives me a lot of flexibility to have the performance when I need it, but when I don't need it, I can scale back the performance and obviously pay less money. Really, we think of UltraDisk for those top tier databases, my SAP HANA, anything that needs really, really high disk performance. And then Premium SSD V2, remember Premium SSD V2 is actually a lot like Ultra because it lets me separately have the IOPS and throughput I can dynamically change. Its performance can't reach the same numbers as Ultra. Its latency is a bit higher, but now Premium SSD V2 and UltraDisk can now be used with Trusted Launch. Trusted Launch, remember, is those Gen 2 VMs that have a virtual TPM, and it enables me to get that secure boot process, which is that attestation from the hardware through to the OS, and it makes sure there hasn't been some root kit or boot kit has got in the way and maybe risking our workload. Azure Data Explorer now has a connector in Apache Flink and what this is going to enable me to do, remember Azure Data Explorer is all about this huge scalable data analytics platform that I can really run real-time analytics against massive amounts of data. I can use that great KQL. And then Apache Flink is that distributed engine for stateful processing of both unbounded. So unbounded would be a stream, it's just there's no end to it but also bounded. There is some end to it. Think of a batch type processing, but it's designed for really low latency. Processing does a lot of things in memory. Well, this connector in Apache Flink now provides a data sync to my Azure Data Explorer, which makes it easy to now take the data from my Flink cluster into an ADX table, which then means, hey, uh, X drag transform load processes, uh, machine learning, obviously log analytics type functions are gonna be really easy to implement. And then Azure NetApp Files, that's the managed service of NetApp filers in Azure data centers. Well, now I can use customer managed keys um, for my volume level encryption, that's now GA. So just like regular customer managed keys, that key would live in your key vault, you would be responsible for that rotation, etc., but you now have complete control to add another level of security uh, to your disk. On the miscellaneous side, so Azure load testing, which remember is that managed service that, hey, I can scale on demand and pay for the amount of load I need to generate based on that Apache J meter. Well, now in GA are HTTP requests. And what this enables me to do is just through the portal, I can do that URL based testing. So I'd specify the endpoint, the HTTP method, the headers, the query parameters, the request body, a number of virtual users to simulate the duration of the test and go. I don't have to have created and really even understand that JMeter format. It's just gonna enable me to do it all from the portal. 
Also now, if I need to use a secret from an Azure Key Vault from my Azure Load Test, well now, if I've got restrictions on the Key Vault that it has a firewall, there's networking restrictions, Azure Load Testing will be able to access it. As long as I have that option to allow Azure Trusted Services enabled, uh, that's gonna work. They also now added something that I can measure response time um, using the web driver sampler plugin for Apache JMeter. So that was another change. I just forgot to add it to the slide. There were new Windows 365 regions for enterprise and frontline. So Italy, North and Poland Central. Remember Windows 365 is just that complete personalized desktop for me without me worrying about any aspect of the infrastructure. And also now we have availability alerts. This is in preview, but what this is gonna enable me to do is if there is some access, there is some availability challenge for my Windows 365, an alert will be generated. There's also a full report to view that. And then there are a whole bunch of updates for Windows 365 boot and switch. So remember boot is, hey, for my corporate managed machine, I can boot directly into my Windows 365 machine. I don't really have to ever see that local machine. So what these updates enable me to do now is I can use passwordless authentication. For example, Hello for Business is going to work now with that. I could do fast user switching. I'll get my little user profile available to there. If there are some network challenges stopping me having access, well, it will fail fast rather than going through this long process and then fail. Um, when I'm in the cloud PC, if I look at the system configuration, there'll be a local PC option to modify local PC device settings like my sound, um, display, other device things. And I can do customization of the login screen with Intune. And then for Windows 365 switch, which if you think of the task view, it lets me easily just switch between my local PC and my cloud PC. Well now in that task view, I can actually simply disconnect from my cloud PC. And there's also now a indicator on my desktop to make it more obvious, am I in my cloud PC? Am I in my local PC? And that was all the updates. Uh, as always, I hope that was useful. Until next video, take care.